Welcome to this week's episode of the Baseball Together Podcast. This week we have trade updates, a couple of notable injuries, and July's edition of Panic or Patience, right now. Nine Plus Us presents the Baseball Together Podcast with your hosts, Blackjack Brad and Kansas City Little Big Briggy Blue Eyes. And now, Baseball Together. Welcome to this week's episode of the Baseball Together Podcast. Baseball family, my name is Brad, and I'm going to be flying solo again this week for the MLB News segment. Brig is a traveling man still. But don't worry, if you're here to catch the Mr. Briggy Brig, uh, he'll be here for the second part, for the second segment when we play Panic or Patience, because we recorded that before. Just so you're aware of this, we, we know, we know. We recorded that Sunday night because he was available, and some of the stuff that we talk about is a little bit out of date. In fact, honestly, the trade deadline is so fast and furious right now that some of the stuff I'm going to say tonight, unfortunately, will be out of date by the time it comes out at midnight Pacific time on Tuesday, by the time you're listening to this. So it's unfortunate, but that's the nature of the deadline because there was actually a trade that went down as I was getting ready to hit record tonight. So there we go. We'll get to stuff. Uh, It's a ton of fun. It's exciting and everything else. Before we get into all that stuff, though, I would like to remind you that we do have a merch store again. It is hosted through millions on millions.co. Hit the link in the description to go straight there or head to millions.co and search baseball together. We have a few shirts, stickers. Uh, We're working on some other designs right now uh, that we will be dropping soonish. Whenever they're finished, when we get to the point where we decide they're ready to drop, then they'll drop, and we'll let you know about it for sure. Um, Again, that's millions.co, search baseball together, or go down to the description and click the link to head over there and check out what we've got. One other thing, we're doing a giveaway on Instagram right now. We're going to give away this book, A Baseball Guy Gene, Chasing a Dream to Japan and Back. Uh, Head over to Instagram. You can see what you need to do to enter to win that book. And actually, you want to tune in this Friday. We've been doing ball talk. That's our new thing on Fridays. Uh, this It's Tony Barnett, the guy in the book. Uh, we're talking to him, and it was a lot of fun. He was a ton of fun to talk to, and we are likely going to have him back during the offseason because he was great to chat with. He was It was a good time. So head over to Instagram. You can win your free copy of the book. Okay, let's get into it now. Trades are coming fast and furious continually. Since things really started to heat up Thursday night into Friday morning, um, I just want to go through and update the notable trades that we've seen so far. Um, AJ Puck from the Marlins to the the Arizona Diamondbacks for a pair of prospects. Randy Arroyo's Arena to Seattle for three prospects from the Rays. Love that trade so much. Uh, Very excited about it. Very excited. I'm going to love having that dude in the lineup. And I hope Mariners fans give him a warm ovation when team gets back to Seattle later this week. Um, Austin Hayes from the Orioles to the Phillies. And this is a baseball trade, big leaguers. Uh, the Phillies got or uh, sent to Baltimore, Sir Anthony Dominguez and Christian Pache. Um, the Mariners got Yimi Garcia from the Blue Jays for a couple of minor leaguers. Zach Eflin to the Orioles from the Rays for three prospects this is a big one right here jazz chisholm to the yankees from the marlins for three prospects that shocked me (laughs) it's going to be interesting watching jazz chisholm try to fit in in new york um carlos estevez to the phillies for two pitching prospects uh from the angels Uh, jesse winker to the mets from the Nats for pitcher Tyler Stewart. Uh, Jesse Winker, while I know he's not like a major, like notable name, I think he's going to have a good impact on the Mets clubhouse because that's kind of what he does. He was kind of a vibes guy in Washington and having a good year too. He's kind of had a resurgence this year, so uh, he he could do well in Queens. Um, (laughs) The Padres got Jason Adam from the Rays for three prospects. Here's another baseball trade. Isaac Paredes to the Cubs for Christopher Morel back to the Rays. It's interesting. I thought that was a really interesting thing. I know that the Cubs have not gotten what they wanted out of Morel. He hasn't been the guy they wanted him to be. Um, 
But I, I, I think that the Rays will be able to get more out of him. They seem like they can with most guys. Um, but I was shocked that the Cubs actually made a deal for Paredes, that they were the ones who got Paredes, because I don't think they have, have what it's going to take to make that push into the postseason this year. Maybe, maybe Paredes is the missing piece, but we'll see. Uh, Michael Lorenzen to the Royals for a minor league pitcher, Walter Pennington from the Rangers. Uh, and so you look at this on the surface, you're like, oh man, are the Rangers selling? No, they're getting Jacob DeGrom back soon. That's, they just needed to clear up a spot in their, uh, in their starting rotation for DeGrom. So Lorenzen had to go. Uh, this is the big three team deal coming up. So you got Tommy Edmond from the cards and Michael Kopech and Oliver Gonzalez from the White Sox are going to the Dodgers. Eric Fetty and Tommy Pham from the White Sox are going to the Cardinals. Um, and then you've got Miguel Vargas, Jarrell Perez, and Alexander Albertas from the Dodgers going to the White Sox. That's a pretty big, pretty big trade. The obviously the big guy in this is is Fetty going to the Cards. They need him. They they really need him in that rotation. Uh, I don't. Hmm, I don't know if he's like again like kind of like Paredes. I don't know that he's the missing piece, but he'll certainly help. Right? He'll certainly help things in St. Louis. Um, Tommy Edmond to the Dodgers. Okay. Kopech is a, is a bullpen arm. will help out. Uh, will help out the Dodgers. So it's, it's an interesting move. Big move. Uh, Justin Turner to the Mariners for outfield prospect, RJ Shrek. <laughs> Shrek's going to the Blue Jays. Uh, I had to throw that in there just because Shrek is a name that you don't forget. I saw him play in the, in the, in uh, spring train in spring training. And I was like, that's a guy I'm going to remember forever. And Indeed, <laughs> I have remembered R.J. Shrek, and clear until his tenure with the Mariner system ended. Uh, Lane Thomas going to Cleveland's baseball club for a pair of prospects from the Nats. Uh, that's a good pickup for Cleveland. Not the th- not the move I thought they would make. Uh, I thought they would make a move for a pitcher. So interesting. Um, some notables who have not been moved still: Garrett Crochet. Uh, Luis Robert Jr., Yandy Diaz, uh, Jack Flaherty. Flaherty was actually pulled from his start today, so I think everybody was expecting him to be moved momentarily. But as of right now, which is about 4.30 Pacific time, he has not been moved yet, unless my phone went off. Let's see. Um, No. Nope. Nope. Flaherty has not been moved quite yet. Um, Yusei Kikuchi. uh, Ken Rosenthal says he's going to go. Just a matter of where. He hasn't been moved yet. Uh, Jameson Tyone hasn't been moved. Luis Renjifo, I'm surprised nobody's picked him up. He's having a career year, and I think he's playing the way that a lot of us in the AL West thought he could. Because, man, he he kills the Mariners big time. He rakes against the Mariners, and I don't know if the Mariners are the only team he does that against. But that's some good pitching to hit well against. So, um I'm surprised he's not gone yet. Vlad Guerrero Jr., there's some conflicting rumors about whether he's whether or not he's going to get moved. He doesn't want to go anywhere. He says he's willing to sign an extension. So I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't. I would actually probably be more surprised if he does get traded at this point. But his name keeps being attached to rumors. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, Blake Snell has not been moved. But again, Ken Rosenthal says there's no reason to move Blake Snell. And I I agree with him. Unless the Unless the Giants are just like, no, you know what? We're just going to sell. We're going to punt on the season. But I don't think there's any reason to do that yet. I may have said something different last night when we recorded, but today I don't feel like that's the case. So, as of the release of this episode, uh, there's a little less than, I want to say there's a little less, maybe a little more than 18 hours to the deadline when this comes out. Actually, no, there's less. There's less than 18 hours when the when this comes out. So there could still be a flurry of deals. We'll probably see some up to the last five, four or five minutes of when the deadline hits. So keep your eye out. Uh, keep your phones close. Probably not a whole lot of work getting done across the country this morning, depending on who you are. <laughs> so anyway, uh, love the trade deadline. It's been a lot of fun since things picked up end of last week. I'll tell you one guy who's not getting traded, though, is Mason Miller. There's there's a lot of talk about him potentially getting traded by the A's just because that's what the A's do. But I didn't feel like there was really any reason to trade him because they've got a ton of control with this guy left. 
Uh, so don't trade him yet. Let him continue to get good or get better uh, before you deal him because he'll just get worth more if he has a good year next year too. So hold on to him and trade him. And especially this year, they're, gonna, they're not going to trade him because he broke the pinky finger in his left hand. This is according to manager Mark Kotze. He said that Miller broke his hand by pounding his fist on a padded training table out of frustration after he was reminded he still need to do, needed to do his post-game lift. A <laughs> little bit of a temper tantrum. Uh, I That's a crappy way to break your finger, man. I know it's a. It, they say it's a fracture, fracture break, tomato, tomato, really, uh, even if it's a not a complete break, you know. Uh, fortunately it's not on his throwing hand. As you can see in this picture, if you're watching on YouTube, he is right-handed. So he could still like get a brace on that thing and maybe wrap it a little bit. And he could still play catch and keep his arm up. Uh, so there won't be as much of a, I don't think he'll have as much time to like ramp things up, but he sure won't be doing many posts. I don't know. He actually, you know what? You wrap it up. He could probably still do some lifts. Use the machines, right? Pull them down, push them up. You can, how many of us, when we're doing the, uh, the shoulder, the shoulder machine, right? The shoulder press machine. Use just use the the heel of your hand. You can get away with that, probably. Probably hurt though with a broken pinky. But anyway, he'll be out for a little while with a <laughs> with a fracture on his left pinky. But he followed Crash Davis's advice and he didn't use his throwing hand. So good for him. Another major injury, unfortunately. So Kodai Senga made his season debut last week on Friday. In fact, <laughs> I got a I got a message from a buddy at work who's a big Mets fan, huge Mets fan, and he could not have been more excited for Senga to come back. He said, may the return of Kodai Senga bless you on this day. And unfortunately, Kodai Senga was not the one. I was blessed at that point. The Rosarina deal had gone through. But unfortunately, Kodai Senga wasn't blessed because he has a high-grade calf strain on his left calf we've got the video here to show you the injury so it's the sixth inning the bottom of the sixth and so he's going over to cover first base as pete alonzo is coming in to make the catch and you can see when it happens it's right here right there he pushes on he goes to run pushes off his left foot and uh he's like they said like they said high grade left calf strain he'd made his season debut against the Braves on Friday coming back from a shoulder injury and it just sucks he's a fun guy to watch uh Mets were Mets fans are looking forward to cut him coming back I will say this though fortunately for the Mets they've gotten to where they are they've gotten to their current position without him so not having him the rest of the way unless it was like a major part of their trade deadline plans to not make a deal because they had Sanga coming back uh, maybe they can make a deal now for an arm because, hey, Crochet is on the market still. And you've got the money you can give him that extension he wants if you want to. So, I don't know. I think they'll can, but I think they'll continue to be okay without him. Um, but I want him to get better soon so that he can get back out there throwing those ghost forks, even if it's not till next year. I want that guy healthy so we can watch it because he's a lot of fun to watch. Well, not a whole lot going today because everything is mostly the trade deadline. And we went a little long with panic or patience, so I didn't want to take up too much time in the in the MLB news segment. But let's wrap things up here at the very end. Let's get into today in baseball history. Today in baseball history, July 30th, 1952, baseball commissioner Ford Frick sets a waiver rule to prevent interleague deals until all clubs bid with the lowest club in the league to get the first pick with a price set at $10,000. He also establishes the trade deadline by barring all of other deals after july 31st thought that was really interesting that that was all set set up in uh, 1952 that we uh, that we saw that and a lot of those rules are still around really interesting so but anyway we're going to take a quick break a quick break and when we get back we'll play this month's edition of panic or patience but before we do that i want to remind you about chinook cedary Head over to ShinookSeedery.com and you get the best seeds ever. As you can see down here on the screen if you're watching on YouTube, huge seeds, huge flavor, huge smiles. Support the show. Support your mouth. Get the best seeds ever from ShinookSeedery.com. And use code BTPOD to save 10% on your order. Uh, I pounded a pack of Parmesan pepper today, and they were so, so, so good. Uh, that's Briggs' favorite flavor. My favorite flavor these days is still cinnamon toast, so a little bit of sweet and salty, a little bit of 
savory. If you're into the Parma Pep, there are other flavors too. You can go check them out over at schnookseedery.com. Just make sure you use code BTPOD at checkout and save yourself 10%. With that, we'll be right back with Panic or Patience. Baseball family, some of the hardest parts about eating sunflower seeds outside of choosing which flavor you prefer is keeping track of the packaging and trying not to spill your seeds all over the place. Well, now those days are over with Seed Sack. You can get a Seed Sack in canvas or leather with a metal squeeze clasp. It keeps your seeds nice and protected. Seed Sack also lets you personalize your sack with names, numbers, and logos. They're great for team gifts, birthdays, or just for whenever. Head over to seed-sack.com and use code baseball together. That's baseball with the number two, gather, and save 5% on your seed sack. Again, that's baseball, the number two, gather, for 5% off your seed sack order. Baseball family, welcome back as we go ahead and discuss Panic or Patience. This is one we do every month as we go into the next cycle 30-day cycle of baseball throughout the season, we're going to tell you what we think for each team. This is a particularly interesting news cycle, though, because the trade deadline is happening Tuesday, and we are midway through all of the kerfuffle that is going on with the trades, and there have been some big splashes, some confusing splashes, and some when are we going to see it question marks popping up. Wouldn't you say that's pretty pretty good summary, Brad? <laughs> I would say that's exactly how it's going. There are certain there are guys who have been moved who you didn't think were going to be moved this early. There are guys who you thought would be moved before and have not been moved. Right. As of this point being Sunday night of a pre-recorded episode. Yep. So So we're making a little confused faces really quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will say though, Brig, you brought up the the 30-day news cycle of of the season, right? Yeah. I feel like the way that we do things now with like the emoji tears and panic or patience and, and the way we have things going through the season, it's made it go really, really fast. I agree with you. The season yeah. has gone so fast. It I can't really believe is. that it's like we're knocking on the door of August already. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Because we, if you think about it, go back to school. <laughs> we are almost a clean 60 days away from the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 60 yeah, days we're, away we're, from the there playoffs. Are, there are fewer than 60 games left in the season. Yep. Unbelievable. We are, yeah, we are inside of the COVID season already. Whoa, isn't that so weird? It is, it is a sprint to the finish. No more saying the season is long because it is not anymore. Nope. And we're going to get into some of those teams who are no longer saying much of anything and teams <laughs> who are saying a lot. Uh, first, right. we're going to start as we always do with the American League East. All right, we're going to talk about panicking or patience. Blue Jays start at the bottom. <laughs> what are you doing, Brad, if you're the Blue Jays? Selling. Selling. You're not having panic yeah. or patience. You're, ha- you're, you're selling. Yeah. You're selling everything. I understand you've got one more year with Vlad and Bichette, but Bichette has been slowly declining. Get what you can for him now before the trade deadline. Um, the Blue Jays have said they're not moving Vlad, but then it's like, and we've talked about this, they, there are reports like, well, they're not like set. But then like today, just today, I saw something that's like, well, they're not like staunch. You, could, <laughs> you might be able to get them. Yeah. Wouldn't be surprised. If if the right deal comes along for Vlad dealing, oh, don't yeah. pass up four or five prospects for the guy. They've The Jays have already moved Danny Jansen. Uh, to the Red Sox. They already moved uh, Nate Pearson, right-handed pitcher, to the Cubs. And the Mariners picked up Yimmy Garcia from the Jays as well. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. So (laughs) what I'm telling you is that your advice to sell is happening. The Rays selling, selling like crazy. The Rays have moved... Sale. It's a fire sale, which they love to do. It's like their motto. Uh, Every few years. Isaac Paredes has moved to the Cubs. The I Padres know. moved Jason Adam. Uh, we saw, uh, let's see. The Mariners got Randy, got Randy Rosarina. Rosarina. 
Yeah, I had a, bu- I have a buddy one. who lives in Florida. He's a, or yeah. I don't know if he still lives in Florida, but he's in the Southeast. He's a, he's a Rays fan. He texted me. He's like, so did we just like give you a Rose Marina? I was like, no, no, you got some good guys back. Some really yeah. good guys back. Yeah. But thank you. <laughs> they, the Rays oh, also yeah. moved Zach Eflin to the Orioles. So he'll be playing in Baltimore now. Um, all this is very exciting. So and That shocks me that they made that move in division. Yeah, me too. You know? And then the Mets picked up Phil Maton. A lot of things going on here. Uh, and Aaron Savali, which we talked about. So uh, now, now, if you're the Red Sox, are you having okay. panic or are you having patience? Because they are six and a half games behind the Yankees, who are only a game behind the, uh, wh- who are they, the Birds, the Baltimore Orioles. No, the Orioles are up in first place in the division. Oh, the, yeah. Sorry. The Red Sox. And the Yankees, then the Red Sox. Yeah, the Red Sox are a game back of the Royals. Yeah. So, this is the thing with the Red Sox. is They're 3-7 and seven in their last 10. They've lost mm-hmm. back-to-back games. The Yankees dropped two out of three in that series. Um, um, thank you. That's right. Yeah, at Fenway. So... <sighs> They're 26 and 35 against teams over 500. But the problem is, is that there are, I don't know, it's it's not the National League anymore where it's nobody's over 500. But yeah, yeah. You've got a winning record on the road, a losing record at home. Mm-hmm. Okay. Honestly, I'm staying pat because the guys who have gotten you to this point, I don't feel like they've necessarily had to play out of their mind. No, it's right? working. Yeah, it's whatever it's is going Except on. Except for Jaron like, Duran, who doesn't know how to do well, anything but play out of his mind. Well, right. Yeah. And I think that's just who he is. He's not yeah. like like he's playing above his career averages, but I think he's reaching like his potential. Right. Like yeah. there, I don't think there's anybody on that roster who's like, it's like, well, he's like five times his career average over the last like six years. There's no reason for him to be playing like this. But I don't know. I feel like. I feel like the Red Sox are pretty stable. They need to figure out how to win at home, which is weird. But yeah, it's super weird. They got the Mariners coming to town, and the Mariners don't play well there historically. So that's going to be interesting to see. Yeah, it will be. Um, do you want to talk about the Yankees, or should we move on to the Central? Like, let's it's talk a very about the Yankees because I yeah, <laughs> I have questions for you. Oh, by the way, the Red Sox are going to be getting uh, Tristan Casas back soon. So, oh, that's right. That's right. That'll be their That'll trade be deadline acquisition. That'll be interesting. Yeah. So let's move on to the Yankees because I have a question for you. Okay. Jazz Chisholm. <laughs> the Yankees traded for Jazz Chisholm. And yeah. this seems like the most awkward situation for everybody involved. Yeah. Because Jazz Chisholm is so vibrant and flamboyant. I don't want I don't know if flamboyant is the right word, but he's he's an exciting player. Yeah, I know Juan Soto has gone in and done some stuff as far as changing the culture and the the outward appearance of play with the Yankee baseball this year because yeah. Juan Juan Soto is as demonstrative and showy as they come. Just about like for sure, there are a few other guys in the league who do it more than he does. Yeah, is Jazz Chisholm going to be a good fit? Is he going to be comfortable in New York? Mm. Well, there's two. There's two things to consider. I think he will rise to the level of showmanship that's required. Will his performance rise to the level that's required? I don't know. That's the real question. The Aaron Boone says he's going to be um, a speed guy on the base paths. And they're going to give him a crash course at third base, given DJ LeMahieu's very steady decline. Are so they really? I, yeah. That's one of the things they want to do is put him at third that, base. Yeah, they're going to give him some looks at third base over the next couple of weeks. They're going to give some looks to Glaber at third base over the next couple of weeks. Um, they don't want Jazz at second, but he came up playing short in second, so he can do it. Um, because he was principally a shortstop on his way to the major leagues, moving him to third doesn't make zero sense. I don't know how I feel about it. I think it's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs to do it mid-season like this. But Okay, but he's never he's never played third base at the big league level. Exactly. Exactly. 
Now, it and is the easiest transition, but it will be interesting, to say the least. And they're batting him fifth, Brad. He, he's, ne- he's always been the leadoff guy. They're batting him fifth in the lineup. They've got another lefty bat in there now. And uh, they want him to steal some bags with Volpe. They're going to make him the one-two threat, the one-two punch on the, the, ba- the base path. So you got Volpe leading off, typically. And then you've got hmm. two, three, four, and then Jazz. And two, three, four are big bangers. Interesting. That's really interesting. It is interesting. So, because I'm so, curious now, I'm looking like I'm I'm furiously searching here, Brig. I'm curious how many games he's actually played at shortstop at the big league level. Oh, I don't know the answer to that. That's what I'm trying to find out. That's a fascinating question. Forty-one. Ooh, that's a small sample size. <laughs> 163 at second base. He's now played more in center field at 186. Yeah. So he's played one game with the Yankees, and he was a center, he played center field for the Yankees on Sunday. Right. Didn't, right. didn't play on Saturday. And then DH5, pinch hitter 11. But yeah, so second base and, and center field with just like a handful at shortstop. So that's – sometimes there's a reason for that. <laughs> yeah, well, and not only that, Glaber is driving the struggle bus. So if he's going to go, Jazz got to fill in. But now we have a – that means we have an immediate problem at third base. So – because DJ is a problem at third base right now. Like I'm waiting to see third base for the Yankees. what's that <laughs> seems like everybody's a problem for the Yankees at third base, <laughs> man. It's for real. So I'm waiting to see what other pins fall, right? Because I, this can't be it. If this look at me, if this is all Brian Cashman brought to the table after this deadline, we're all going to grab our pitchforks. Like seriously. That I will say this. You talked was a last year, two years ago, maybe even three years ago. I don't know. It was a while ago about uh Cashman just collecting baseball cards. So he was collecting mm-hmm. names. He wasn't collecting yeah. guys who fit together. He wasn't filling or meeting needs. He was just collecting baseball cards. So this is what and that was my first thought when I saw the Yankees traded for Jazz Chisholm. I was like, What? Uh like, is that is that what that feels like to you? Is it Cashman does collecting it baseball does. cards again? It does. I do think, though, this will be a great show of capability for Aaron Boone. If Aaron Boone is able to squeeze what he's supposed to be able to squeeze out of this lineup, which we talked about last week, right? If he can Mm -hmm. find a way to get Jazz into the lineup, effective in the lineup, and spark some kind of... Even if it's confusion, even if it's fear, even if all these other guys are like, is he going to take my spot if I don't perform? Are they going to choose somebody who's underperforming at a defensive position, but whose bat has capability? You know, that might freak people out. I don't care what they got to do. Honestly, I don't care. And if that's the game, play it. Let's see what happens. There's no reason to not throw mud right now. None. You're in a perfect position to dink around for a minute and tinker and see what happens. But you can't take too long. You can't. You got like... Three weeks of tinkering, and then you have to set it up. Well, I will say this. Fortunately, the Yankees, despite all their struggles, they're only a game back in the East. They're four yeah. and a half up on the wild card. Correct. Right? So, and I mean, the, the Orioles are five and five in their last 10. The Yankees are four and six. That's not bad. I mean, it's that's not bad. That's a game back right there. Rome is not right? burning. Like, no, it doesn't even smell like We smoke. thought it was. We thought it was. Well, it, it looked like it. But it was just a campfire. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, no, I think one of the rooms was ablaze. <laughs> Luckily, there was a firewall built in, <laughs> and the the wall is is <laughs> the studs separating those two rooms are named Judge and Soto. <laughs> there you go. You're right. And now they brought. All in right, that. let's move on to the American League Central. So uh, the White Sox are selling off everybody. The Tigers. What are you White doing? Sox are the essentially Tigers? eliminated from the playoffs already. Let's be real. Right. Like, They're 0 and 10 in their last 10. Did you see that? They've lost 14 in a row. Yeah. <laughs> for the second time. Yeah. For the second time this year. Right. They have currently won 27 games total. Yeah. They've lost Bad 81 man. games. 
unbelievable. So let's talk about the Tigers. They're 52 and 55. That's a 486. They're 12 games out of the division, five and five in their last 10. And if you look at the wild card situation, they are five and a half back from the break even point behind Tampa Bay, Seattle, Boston. I don't think Tampa Bay is going to stay in that hunt. So Detroit by default is going to move up. Um, what are you doing? What is your assessment right now of the Tigers through the, the next 60 days? It's tough with the Tigers because they should have been a lot better this year. And I, this is the thing is like, I know a lot of, I'm sure a lot of teams have called about Scoogle, right? About Tarek Scoogle. Oh, yeah. Like, like we want to, and I'm sure that the answer was like, mm, no, no, we're not going to trade him because they still have control with Scoogle. Like I'm looking right now and uh, he's not going to be a free agent until 2027. That's a long time. Yeah. That's a couple more years. So there's no reason for them to trade him because they could come back next year and have another pretty good start. Like they had this year and maybe sustain it. So I don't think that they're, I, I think they, I don't think they should sell off because you want to keep the guys that you can. Right. Right. Yep. But I, I, I kind of think that you shut down the winning side of things. You, you, I, I don't want to say shut down the winning side. Like maybe shut down the playoff race and shift your mentality. And like, we're probably not going to make it. Let's just play spoilers here on out. And if by us playing spoilers happens to get us into the, the race, at the very end of the season. Sure. Then let's go for it. Because five and a half yeah. games is not a lot, but the teams that you have to pass, the Mariners, Red Sox, probably the Astros, and potentially the Royals, like yeah, that's those rough. are teams that I don't think they're gonna catch. I so agree. I so for mentality. You, yep. And I was gonna say the same thing. For me, the Tigers are in a developmental phase. Uh, the rest of the season is let's get some guys some at bats, let's look at them, let's put them into some stress situations and see how they perform. Let's take really good notes, which they're already doing, that kind of stuff is what I'm doing if I'm Detroit. But, like you said, if they fluke into a bunch of wins, that's terrific, and who cares? That's awesome. Well, then you ride the hot hand of the playoffs, possibly. Right. What do you care? Like, what do you have to lose at this point? Nothing. You just play it however you want. Okay, Royals. 57-49. and Six and a half games back. They're five and five in their last ten. They currently hold the line. At the break-even point on hold the wild the card games, yeah, they hold the line at the break-even point. In the wild card that puts them at the third slot. What are you giggling about? It's home star runner reference. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I know you have an aversion. <laughs> I I do. <laughs> anyway. Which is fine. It's fine. Okay, if you're the if you're the Royals now, have the Royals done any acquisitions? Let's look. I haven't seen that they have. And that's what they I was going to say is I feel like they acquired they Hunter get... Harvey from the Nationals. And that's it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Like that's, that's a right handed pitcher. That's a need. That's a need. I'm glad that they yeah. did that because, um, yeah. They need, I was going to say they need some bullpen help. And that's what they got from Hunter Harvey. Good for them. That's a good move. That'll help them. Yeah. They're right. Yeah. That's what they. That's what they need. That's like the one hole that they have. They have good starting piece. pitching. Yeah. They have an amazing. I don't want to say an amazing offense. They have a good offense. They just need some help in the bullpen to help hold those leads when they have them. So good for yeah. them. Good for them. Um, and I think I think the Royals need to hold steady, keep doing what they're doing. They'll get there. They'll get I to agree. the playoffs. Yeah, they're going to get to the playoffs. They're, uh, the Royals are, the, are going to be the reason only one team from the AL West gets in the playoffs. Yep. That is correct. Um, okay, the Twins are interesting because they are two games up in the wild card race. That's four and a half. Let's see. That's two and a half games behind the Yankees in the wild card race. And they are sitting five and five in their last 10 with a record of 58 and 46. If you are the Twins, having made one infield acquisition, Ryland Bannon picked up from the Mets for what is reportedly unknown compensation on July 15th. 
it's anything like the Mariners, one dollar. Yeah, then what are you going to do if you're the Twins? Obviously, you're going to hold steady at some level. But what uh, are you so, panic? Is this a panic move? Is this a patience move? It's what an are we going to classify move because this? Because he hasn't even played this year, right? Not at the big league level. Uh, uh, he's a middle infielder, or no? Sorry, he's a he's a third baseman, second baseman. I don't think that 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 move moves the needle at all. the The Twins just, oh man, they because they do a lot of things really well. They it's do. consistency is their problem. I feel yeah. like and staying healthy. Their stars can't stay healthy, right? Like yeah. Correa has plantar fasciitis now, and then yeah. Royce Lewis can't seem to ever stay healthy. Unfortunately for them. Um, yeah. I think if those guys come back and they can, and they can play, they can play the rest of the home stretch. They'll be fine. Like they could threaten the Guardians because the Guardians are having some troubles right now. But yeah. uh, four and a half games, though, are they four and a half games threatening or no? Because that's how right far now, back yeah. they sit on Sunday. Yeah. Night. So let's talk about Cleveland for a minute. What does Cleveland have? The problem they have is they're starting pitching. Yeah. Like legitimately is a problem for them. Like, but it, they're in first. The place. offense has turned around. The offense has turned around. Things have gone really well, but then the pitching, yeah, not so much. Like so far, Cleveland has made zero moves at the de- to this. And point I think in the they're deadline. just waiting for guys to figure it out because that team they have, like, it's a, ball, it's a good ball club. Good ball club. They have the best record in the American League. They are. They have the yep. second best record in baseball. Yep. Like second. Yeah, they're tied for the second. No, they have a, they have fewer losses than the Dodgers. They have the second best record in baseball, so yeah, there is no the reason for them to panic at all. They just have yeah. to be like, okay, like how do we get back to what we were doing before? Like, yeah. what does our pitching need to do to figure this out? I don't know. It it would help if they went and they got a pitcher just to help mm-hmm. infuse some of that back into the starting rotation. Um, but I don't know that that's necessarily going to happen. I don't think so. I think they're going to hold steady. I don't think they're going to do anything. That's why I think they're gettable. That's why I think they're gettable. If the Twins go on a hot streak, they'd have to go on a hot streak to have it happen. And I don't know if that's I agree. Royals are not going to get them. It would have to be the Twins. Right. Okay, the American League West is really interesting. We've got the Athletics. We don't care. Angels, nobody cares. The Rangers, 51 and 55, four and a half games back. They are five and five in their last ten. In the wild card, they are sitting way below Tampa Bay and Detroit. They're six games out. They seem to have a run differential of zero. <laughs> <laughs> did you notice that? Their yeah, run differential is yeah. zero. <laughs> yeah. But they're twenty seven to thirty four against teams over five hundred. That's not as bad as they look. Um because they, they did just uh, get swept by the Blue Jays. Oh my. Okay. Well. All right. So, are you so, panicking or are you having patience? The, there are two things you can do. Patience is not one of the things you can do as as the Rangers. You can either have pa- you can either panic and be like, okay, last year we made a couple of deadline deals and yeah. it took us to the promised land, or yeah. you can be like, we are not going to get enough pieces back in time to to be able to keep up with the Mariners and the Astros. Or just the Astros, if the Mariners continue to fall, uh, we need to sell. So they just picked up catcher Carson Kelly from the Tigers, and they shot, shipped right. off two prospects. That does not so it feels indicate like it feels like passive they're approach, right? Yeah. I know, yes. but at the same time, like Carson Kelly, they have Jonah Heim. Exactly. So it's not like they brought in an impact player who's going to like insert into the lineup every day and infuse his his offense no. and his leadership into this team. No, he's a backup. Yeah. So to me, that that's not a winning move. No. Bringing in Carson Kelly, I like Carson Kelly. Don't get me wrong, good player. Right, but, but it's not. But it's Hine. not a. It's it doesn't even feel like a long term move. It's not like no. Okay. But next year, this guy's going to be the one. It's like, no, what? Right. what is happening? And you're not offloading payroll or some other business decision by shipping off some prospects. I'm confused. I did hear, I will say this, I did hear on foul territory last week that the Rangers had gotten to a point where they were kind of like, we're not going to be getting guys back in time. 
we're going to have to sell. That that was like the approach. But then the Mariners lost a bunch of games in a row. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And that was kind of, and I wonder if that was kind of like, well, no, hold on. But I think they've kind of gotten back where they're getting in their own way. The Mariners have infused some, a little bit of offense into their lineup and they're back to hitting again. I know it was the White Sox, but it was their three best pitchers who were pretty dang good. So they're pretty good. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's looking like it's going to be out of, out of range for the Rangers. I agree. Um, Nice. Nicely said. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know if they're going to buy into that and start selling though in the next day. So, right. So why pick up Carson Kelly? I have no idea what's going on. Right. It's, Screwball. Chris Young's a good okay. GM, but I don't know what he's doing. Correct. Let's move on to the Mariners because this is fascinating. They're dead even with the Astros in the division race as of Sunday night. Okay, 55, or excuse me, 56 and 51. Four and six in their last 10. They did sweep the White Sox, and it was an away series. And Brad made it very clear that it was against their three best pitchers, who are no, no joke. And in the wild card situation, they're a game and a half back as of Sunday night. One behind the Red Sox, and then two behind the Royals, which is where that uh, first spot holds. They have a plus 25 run differential. Brad, are you panicking? Are you having patience? And is Randy or Rosarina enough? Um, so first, I was really panicking the other day. But then the, then the Rosarina deal came, deal came through. And I started to have more patience. I was like, okay, this is not the last move. Went and got mm-hmm. Yumi Garcia. That is a Bingo. great move. Yeah. He has been money the couple days that he's been pitching. Love it. But the one, Brig, this is the one, this is one reason that, that I think we need to have a little bit more patience with this team going through the deadline, like after the deadline. Because I do think they need to get one more bat. One more bat is going to do a lot for that lineup. Yeah. 27 and 30 against teams over 500. It's not a bad record considering it's this team horrible. went a long stretch and like didn't score any runs. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, yeah, like they true. scored one run a game in three games against the angels. The starting pitching gave up one earned run and they still got swept. Like, yeah. How do you, how does that yeah. happen? I don't know. So I, I think know. that I think everybody needs to just take a breath, have a little bit more patience with this team. It seems like this team's having more patience with itself. I do mm-hmm. like that the that the front office did panic a little bit and was like, we need to go get a big hitter, get a swing and get a big hitter. And they got a Rosarina. And it's I know his deal. numbers were down at the beginning of the season, but he's been good since like the beginning of June again. Yeah. So he's, and, he's and Brig, fun. you get that dude in October and he takes five steps ahead of everybody else. He is a monster. He is a monster. So. So what do you think of them shipping off uh, Ryan Stanek? Uh, he had a really good stretch for a while, but he has not been good for a couple weeks. Okay. I started calling him Stank. Yeah, because they picked up they- Ryland Thomas as a, a an outfielder um, for for the acquisition, for the, the move. Um, yeah, that was just a... 24-year-old minor league outfielder. So yeah, he's gonna stay in in the minors because because I mean think about this, Brick. You got you got a Rosarina in the left right now. You got Robles in center in center filling in for Julio. Julio, Julio gets back from a high ankle sprain soon. You put Julio back in center. Put Robles in right. Robles, by the way, who got DFA'd by the Nats, has been playing like a man possessed since he got to Seattle. Holy cow! That's awesome. Like yeah, that's awesome. He was pumped to get to Seattle, and he has been playing like this is where he's wanted to be his entire life. He's been the best player on the team the last three weeks. Dude, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> he's got an OPS plus of almost 200. <laughs> what? He's been on Seriously? Three, just yeah. the last three weeks? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Since he's been with the Mariners. <laughs> it's crazy. Man. That is crazy. Like, let me look it up for sure. Because <laughs> it's he's been absolutely unreal. Uh, Yeah, not 194 <laughs> going there into Sunday. Go. It's awesome. <laughs> Now, I think the Astros make a lot of sense. We probably don't need to spend much time on them, but I think we can safely say they're being patient. They're going to hold steady. What they're doing seems to be working. And uh, it's if I were them, I'd go get Crochet. I don't know what they, I don't know what, who or what you trade for Crochet. Maybe you just, I don't know. And maybe that's the thing because they have gutted their farm system over the last few years. They do not have a good farm system. So I don't have anybody that can trade for Crochet. 
That's but true. I don't know. So maybe that's why they have to be patient. They just have to rely on what they have. It's how many, no, how many at some level, capital. it's working. They're going to the playoffs yeah. at this point. Like it'd be very difficult to not. Well, I'll tell you this: if the season were to end today, the Mariners would go. The Mariners would get the division. I know that the Astros have uh, percentage points over them, but the Mariners hold the tiebreaker. Right, but there's the Astros would still go to the playoffs in the wild card spot. They no. Oh. Oh, in the wild card? I don't think so. Hold on. I think so. 524. Oh, no. If it ended today, the Astros would not make it to the playoffs. It'd be the Royals. It'd be the Royals. (laughs) Whoa. This is a tight situation then. So you are definitely going to have patience in Houston because you simply must. Yeah. Yeah. There's not a lot you can do. Interesting. Let's move on to the National League really quick. Let's start in the East. Marlins, nobody cares. Nationals, we know what they're doing. Let's talk about the Mets. 55 and 50, which is way better than I expected. They're it is. 10 <laughs> games back in the division, honestly. That's why, six and that's four. why it seems like they're so bad. <laughs> yeah, 6 and 4 in their last 10. And in the wild card situation, we've got them. Oh, boy. They're holding the line. They're dead even. Say it again. Yeah. They're dead even at the wild card. They've Hold the line. Third spot. There it is. They've got that third spot locked in. Nice. <laughs> um, their run differential is really interesting. They're at plus 16, which again, does not feel like accurate, but they swept the entire Subway series from the Yankees and they did it with Panache. So, like, let's be honest. They're, they're nothing. You can't shake a stick at them. No, and I think honestly, with the Mets, you just have to be patient. You just got to keep keep doing what you've been doing with the guys you've been doing it with, because yeah. this is what you expected to happen. You like like all the talk of like, well, they got they're gonna have to trade Pete Alonso, like, and they were almost mm-hmm. like, do we though? Do we? Right. Mm-hmm. Do we? No, we don't they because do. we're gonna figure it out and we're gonna <laughs> make some noise. Now they did acquire Phil Maton from the Rays, so right-handed pitcher and Phil, Phil Maton comes in. Fill the hole. That'll they, help. Yeah. They um they kicked it out Ryland Bannon. Um not a big they, no, no loss. No loss there. They did lose Tyler J, left handed pitcher Tyler J, and they picked up TJ Shook. They brought in they, Ryan Stanick. And Stanick. Yeah. And then Jesse Winker from the Nationals. So here's the thing about Jesse Winker. Jesse Winker is a good vibes guy, like big time. Mm. One mm-hmm. of the things that kind of tainted his legacy in Seattle, if that's what you want to call it, was sure. on the way on his way out the door, Ryan Divish, the guy who covers the the beat writer for the Mariners for the Seattle Times, he said that Winker didn't really fit in the locker room because Mitch Haniger works hard and Jesse Winker doesn't. Oh. <laughs> but okay. but Jesse Winker willingly took on the entire Angels dugout. When they threw at Julio. True. And that turned the entire season around. Good clubhouse guy. Yeah. Very good clubhouse guy as far as personality goes. Fans love him. Like, there's a whole Jesse Winker pizza thing after that. Oh, cool. Yeah. And he was was a good vibes guy in Washington, too. So I think he's going to bring good vibes to the Mets. I think it'll be a good pickup for them. He may not necessarily be the best player, but he's having a good year. So maybe he will be a good player for them. But I think right. he's going to help keep things light when they need to be light down the stretch for them. I think it'll be, I think it'll be a good pickup. Like that for them. Uh, the Braves, eight and a half games back. <laughs> somehow, four and Braves, six in their last the, ten. I think the Braves and need to turn into the skid. You think so? Yeah, just. Why? Hold the way things are because okay. there, too many injuries. Too many injuries. Yeah, you're not getting Albies back until two weeks left in the season. They they hold the number one spot in the wild card, but it's a game and a half up is all. It's very right. very small. They you still have the a plus fifty six run back. differential. You yeah. got a, you got the Diamondbacks two games back of them. You've got yeah. the Cardinals two and a half games back of them. You get the Pirates three and a half games back of them. There are a lot of teams breathing down their necks Mm -hmm. that are healthy today. Knock on fake wood from Ikea. 
right? There you go. You've got it. I got you. Like, there are not enough moves in the world that the Braves can make to fill the holes that have been created by injuries on that team. Yeah. Just play it out as it is. If you don't make it, you blame it on injuries and start over next year. Yeah. I feel like that's um, with, the, uh, with the Braves. So, I think uh, it's tough because the Braves have put themselves in a really great spot. And I think that they have what it takes to continue to carry them into the playoffs. I have no idea how deep that takes them, though. And But you, you're right. If they get some guys back, then we're going to have a different situation. So I'm, I'm, I'm having patience if I'm Atlanta. I don't know another okay. way to, to do it. I'm I, think, I think Atlanta just has to shift their mindset. Just, I mean, I guess patience is what it is. is just You just keep doing what you're doing, and if it works, it works. If not, then like yeah. I said, just blame injuries because everybody has injuries. Well, nobody gets snake bitten by injuries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right like, like this <laughs> bad luck with injuries this year yeah so this is pretty intense <laughs> yeah and then the phillies are really killing it okay so the national league central goes to our next question okay this is fascinating the nl central if you are cincinnati and you're sitting 10 games back and you're tied with the cubs 10 games back what are you doing because you're not, you're still only five games out of the wild card race. Granted, you are like the sixth team down outside of the wild card because the wild card in the National League is a tight race. Even Washington's only six and a half back of the wild cards conversation. Right. I know. There's only two this teams who are completely out. So the Reds have held steady with what they're doing, right? Like the Reds yeah. have not gone out and sold. Like they, they have a good team. And yeah. they could get hot in August and be a real problem. And I still yeah. am not I'm still not ruling that out. Yeah. Well, they've got like, injury problems. They do. I don't know, man. It's so weird with the Reds. I think so here's the thing. I got to look and see real quick how much because I think India has a couple more years of control left. He's not he's not he a does. free agent until 2027. That's right. So I think it's I do think it's going to be telling to see what the Reds want to do with what they do with India in the next like day. Yeah, day and a half maybe. Yeah, like if they well, deal him for prospects, yeah, they're holding out for next year. If they deal him yeah. for a pitcher, if they deal him for a bullpen arm, then they're going in. Right. Yeah. I yeah. think he's the piece that they move, and depending on what they get back, tells us their mindset. So they just acquired. Almost... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to no, say, I, the... just, I almost just think like hold Pat, like stand Pat on it. Like, <laughs> yeah. I think if you get rid of Jonathan India, you're either not running your business effectively or you're bringing a haul in. There's, there's only two ways about it. And the problem with baseball business is when it comes to players and injuries and performance and hopes and dreams and everything, it's a very fickle business. So you, yep. one in the hand is way better than two in the bush. It just is right. Way I better. know. And that's what I'm saying. Like if they get, if you get, if it's a baseball trade where you trade big leaguer for big leaguer, right? Like go for it, man. Good to go. Good to go. Do it. Cause that can help you tomorrow. But yeah. if you're going to trade for three prospects, then you're not going for it this year. Nope. And, I, and that's why I think like maybe the best thing is just keep India and go this year. If yeah. it happens, it happens. If not, then you make deals in the off season, but yeah. five games is a lot, but it's not at the same time because they could very well flip a switch and find their groove in August because they're it's good. So it's a good weird. team. There's tons it's of talent on that team. Same with the Cubbies. Cubbies are in the exact same uh, <laughs> the situation. Cubs, the Cubs made... Sorry, go ahead. And I'll talk about the the, the Cubs are in the exact same situation mathematically and on paper. But the tone, the the feeling around this team is that they're, like, not doing it. They acquired right. third baseman Isaac Paredes from the Rays because the Rays are just dumping people at this point. Uh, they also acquired Nate Pearson from the Blue Jays, who's a right-handed pitcher. 
Um, so in that Paredes deal, they sent Morel. Yeah. They sent Christopher Morel to they did the Rays, which is, <clears throat> that blew my mind. Exactly. I'm surprised. I know that Morel hasn't right. been what they wanted, but still. But it's a third base, third base swap. It's one to one plus some prospects. And now Isaac Paredes is a good baseball player. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's I, he was on the Mariners' but, radar there for since since like December. Yeah. Sixteen homers, a seven ninety two OPS. So, and he's under club control till twenty twenty seven. So, this is a big deal for the Cubs. Is it a big enough deal to send them all the way? Given that they are five games out of the wild card and they are number one, two, three, four, five on the list of teams. I say okay, so, no thank you. <laughs> and that's the thing, is like it should be, right? Because we talk we've been saying all year, it's a good team. Like, what the heck is going yeah. on? But yeah. the problem, the number that I have a problem with is that minus seven run differential. The Reds have a plus thirty five run differential. Correct. Now don't put everything in the run run differential, but it can nope. sometimes be the difference between teams that have the potential to go off and the teams that are likely going to fall. The Mariners a few years yeah. ago had a minus run differential, but Scott Service said they had a plus fun different plus 90 fun differential. And I feel, feel like that was what made the difference was the clubhouse chemistry was what made the difference to get that team. They were, they didn't make the playoffs, but they got close. No. Yeah. The Cubs do not feel like they have a plus 90 fun differential. If they did, I'd be like, man, they might be able to go. That's but they what don't. I was going to say. The vibe check is failing. It's off. Yeah. Yep. Definitely off. It's off. All right. Pittsburgh. Ooh, Pittsburgh. Seven games back. We're not going to probably worry about them clinching the division in any conversation ever at all. But they are two games back in the wild card conversation and the third team below the zero mark. So they are... Again, Diamondbacks are half a game out of the wild card. St. Louis is one game. That blows my mind. And then Pittsburgh is also only two games back. I'm wondering, what are you doing if you're the Pirates, Brad? Pirates they need haven't to get made a, a single arm. deal. They need they need to get a bullpen arm. Yeah. Uh, no, they need to get a bat, honestly. And that's the thing that's hard is there are not a lot of bats on the market right now. Right. Like Paredes is gone. The Rosarina has gone. You could you could get Yandy Diaz from the Rays, right? But I don't know if that's the move you want to make. Um, I don't know. It's so weird because like if they got a little bit of offense, they could be really good. Yeah, and that's what they, <laughs> they need. They the need some check. offense. They passed the vibe oh, for check, sure. right? For Minus sure. ten run differential, but they passed the vibe check. 100%. There are certain teams that make losing look fun, and they're one of those teams that make losing look fun because they're still good. So well, they're over five hundred. I know, but even when they lose, it still looks like, man, they just had a good time that game. Like, they had a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. So, and just barely over 500, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I know. One game. <laughs> I don't know. I think I think you make a deal. If, the right, if you can make the right deal for a bat, you do it. If not, then you just kind of try to ride the vibes to the playoffs, and you might be able to do it. Yeah, probably not go deep, but get in there. Shake I it up a little the, I bit. I think they go deeper. I think they, if they make it, I think they go deeper than you would expect them to because of that pitching staff. That starting Could rotation. Be. Ooh, yeah. yeah, boy. I'm telling but, you, right? I've been telling you for a while. Yeah, you have been. You have. That's exactly right. But at the same time, they have a lot to overcome before they get there, and they're going to rely on other teams to lose in order to do it. Yeah, they they can't just win their way there, and that's the problem. Okay, right. let's move on to the Cardinals. This boggles my mind that the Cardinals are only six games back in the division and they're one game out of the wild card conversation. I remember earlier in the season when we were writing them off. We're like, nah, it's over. Don't oh, I know. It. For a long time. <laughs> and and I'm not saying we are going to change. I'm not saying I'm going to change my mind right this minute. Uh, I think mm-hmm. this is a testament to how good the Pirates have been, um, which is weird, but... I think the Cardinals are on paper better than they are in the from the eye test. I'm not buying it. I don't care. I'm just not buying it. I think if you're going to sit here and tell me that the Pittsburgh Pirates, if they make it into the playoffs, they go deeper than you think. I'm telling you right now that if the Cardinals make it into the playoffs, they go less deep 
They do not they do not continue to drive deep into the playoffs. That's what it looks like to me. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh I, I mean, granted, it seems like Goldie's figuring it out, but we're still not getting yeah. the Arenado that they need. Right? Like need I think bad. I think this team is gonna get tired yeah. here in when you had the dog days. So well, and I think I Tommy think Edmund that. could be on his way out. And that's for me one of the linchpins. If they move Tommy Edmund, they're packing. Can you move him when you're only a game back on the wild card? Like that's crazy. <laughs> if you get the right deal, you have a minus forty eight run differential. If you get the right deal for Tommy yeah, Edmund to. yeah. and you know you can pick it up next year, as crappy as it sounds, but you only have sixty days yeah. to figure it out. I'm saying if the right deal came along and you get a chance, you take it. Yeah, you're right. I think you're right. Think you're and they right. haven't made a single. Yeah, I don't think move. they're gonna sell. I think I think it's just I think what it is, they're gonna end up having patience with the whole thing and they're just gonna tail off. That's what's yeah. gonna happen. Okay. The Brew Crew, they're sitting pretty. Okay, let's move they're on fine. to the National League West really quick. The uh, the the Rockies, forget about it. They're twenty five games out. The Giants the Giants are interesting. They're ten and a half games back, fifty-three and fifty-five. After all that, uh, acquisitions on the hot stove this this off season, this past off season, with all the fireworks with Blake Snell and Matt Chapman and everything, I am shocked that they're doing this poorly. I'm also shocked that I've seen rumors of selling off Blake Snell already at the deadline. That's fascinating. Well, I mean, he has obviously hasn't been a fit, right? Clearly. Hasn't worked. He's still a terrific pitcher. I he think is, maybe yeah. it is only a culture problem or something. This is the thing, though, with Blake Snell, is that like the secret I almost feel I almost feel it almost feels like the secret is out on him. Like the dude mm. walks everybody, just don't swing unless he makes you. For sure. So I wonder. I think we that's talked about this plan. last week, didn't we? Talk about I that last so. week. We talked about it a little bit ago. Yeah, um, th- they made a deal. Who did they get? Why can't I think I'm of who look. they got? I'm gonna look right now. They um, picked up uh, Mike Bauman from the Mariners, right-handed oh, pitcher. Oh, that's Mike Bauman. right. Yeah, Bauman. Yeah, he's a, he's a good bullpen arm. Like he has his moments where he's not good, but he's fine. He's not going to make a difference for them now, but I think they're. Just, I honestly think they're just going to sit there and see if whatever is going on and see if guys can make it work. If not, they're just like, man. Bauman's been dealt twice this season. Yeah. He started with the Baltimore yeah, he got, Orioles. He got, he got, I think he got DFA'd by the Orioles and the Mariners picked him up off waivers. That's what happened. But crazy. Yeah, That's no, I don't crazy. think the Giants are going to be able to put it together. But let's talk about the D backs, Brig. Yeah, the D backs are fun to talk about. Because they are still the second team, second best offensive team in baseball as far as just scoring Crazy. runs goes. They are 55 and 51, seven and a half back in the division. They're not going to catch the Dodgers. Half a game back in the wild card, as we've said. Six and four yeah. the last 10, plus, 20, plus 26 run differential, 26 and 31 against teams over 500. Yeah. Now, their issue is their pitching. Yeah. And that kind of ebbs and flows with everything else, I feel like, especially since it's primarily their bullpen. They get some they get guys back. Eduardo Rodriguez still has not pitched for them, I believe. And he got hurt in spring training. And so Yeah, Rodriguez has not pitched for them. So Jordan Montgomery's figuring it out. Paul Seawald has been up and down as their closer, but Kevin Ginkle yeah, has yeah. been good. Wow, Ginkle's Brandon awesome. Fat you has can been, get him to be awesome. Yeah, Brandon Fat has been has been good. Zach Gallon has come back to himself. So yeah, thank goodness. I think honestly, I don't think they need to make any moves. They just need guys to just get playing like they know how. A couple of days ago, they did pick up left-handed pitcher AJ Puck from oh, the that's Marlins. Right, and I'm not impressed by that move. Puck, Me neither. Like that's not your guy. It's not I, mean, I guess guy. he's another arm in your bullpen that can help, but I, he's he not is. your savior. 44 innings up to uh, July 25th. He'd had 44 innings, 4.30 ERA. Um, He's 29. Began the season with a 9.22 ERA. Ooh, that's rough. Oof. Yeah. 
Anyway, bullpen guy, going to be interesting. Does, again, not an impressive move. Okay, the Padres. This is the last one. Padres are 57 and 51, 7 and 3 in their last 10. They're six and a half behind the Dodgers. I don't think they'll catch up. They are half a game up in the wild card race, plus 34 run differential, 30 and 31 over teams uh, against teams over 500. Now, the for me, the Padres are doing a great job. They still need to make a move. They yesterday, I think, acquired yeah. Jason Adam from the Rays, mm-hmm. who's a right-handed pitcher. Um, and that's going to be awesome for them just to have another. Yeah, he's another he's another, another bullpen arm. arm for them. Yeah. Um it'll be I think that's what they need. Didn't they get a position player? But they got a position player. I don't see any rumors. Maybe not. But I mean their big acquisition player. was Luis Arias. For sure. Who like, has been stellar and turned things around. He is the yes, he's the reason. He's the the so, that was the move that changed everything. So I think that I think what it is is the the Padres may have panicked a little bit early and made the move mm. before everybody else, and it's paid dividends, and they can just kind of ride it the rest of the way, and they're going to make the wild card. Yeah, I think so. I think though, if it's possible to pick up an arm, you do it. I don't think they need bat support. I think they need arm well, support. That's one of the things is a lot of times it's like just just another bullpen arm, just another bullpen arm, right? Because you can never have too many bullpen arms to like. Just lengthen, lengthen out the game, out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if they can't, I I don't think you press for it. I don't think you like force a deal. But if one is there, that's where the price is right. Make the deal, get it done, and and you're good. And but write it out. See what happens. I, I think if it's not there, I'm not worried about it. If I'm the Padres, but if you're the Padres, you're not taking no for an answer going into the playoffs. Right. That's the cool thing. I think they are they are a threat, and it's very exciting. Yep, that's who we thought they'd be, for sure. Yeah, finally, finally. <laughs> it's only been <laughs> we've only been sitting around waiting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now it's here. But baseball family, let us know what you think about your team. Uh, should they be panicking or having patience going into and coming out of the trade deadline? Do you think they're going to be a playoff team? They're going to. Do you think your team is going to be playing spoiler? Let us know. Did I say spoiler or spoily? I think it's said spoiler. You said spoily, spoiler. and I loved it. <laughs> Gonna be playing spoiler the rest of the way. Let us know what you think uh, down in the comments on YouTube. It's probably the best place to do it. Or you can shoot, send us an email. Baseball to the pod at gmail.com. You can reach us there. Um, send questions, comments, concerns, side remarks, whatever you want. I will check it and I will read it. And if I like it, I'll read it. We'll read it on an episode. So there you go. Sure. Like, subscribe, rate, and review everywhere that you can. Again, especially on YouTube, that helps a lot more than you know. Uh, we have a goal of reaching a thousand subs. Uh, before the end of the season and we would love to reach that goal so help us out there if you can if you have not already um then baseball don't family, forget about the giveaway people. oh don't oh, forget about the giveaway yeah we've got a book that we're giving away it's uh, a baseball guy gene written by aaron fishman brad's got his copy right there bingo it is an absolutely terrific book our conversation with aaron was fabulous our conversation with tony who's the subject of the book was also fabulous so Friday. go to Instagram, like the post, follow the page, tag two friends, and enter for your chance to win a copy for yourself. And with that Absolutely. baseball family, we're going to get you next week. Next week.